not just one hour picture as I can probably repeat. Um, so what we are doing here, like the idea is that today people use SAP and they pick a, a, some type of implementation, generally for storage using how type. But the point over here is that uh, we are getting a, in, a, in a world where one, si one size does not fit all. There are a lo lot of options on our drives, a um, lot of options on SSDs. If you far in the future, we see more technology coming. You know, 3D cross point would be a good idea, but uh, you know, that uh, segmentation would be very, very thick. And there are opportunities where we could use a different class of storage for different type of data. But the real trick is uh, who selects which data goes where. So what we are doing over here is uh, a, a benchmarking, specifically about the data location. So it's mainly writing fences. And we start with uh, the normal implementation where we use a normal conventional magnetic recording drive. So hard drive, general hard drive that you buy. And then we start looking to, well, what if uh, we replace the, the CMR, you know, normal hard drive with uh, a combination of uh, SMR, shingle magnetic recording. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but the shingle magnetic recording are hard drives that based on the same technology point uh, as every hard drive get a much higher density of track. So much higher density, much lower dollar per gigabyte cost, uh, but uh, suffer terribly in terms of performance because uh, it's like a tape. All the data has to be written in, in, a, in, in a row, in series. So you have to remap uh, and you have to garbage collection, uh, a lot of things common with SSD. The good thing, those are extremely cheap in terms of dollar per gigabyte, but extremely slow, at least for random type of RAM. And we want to complement them with uh, SSDs. Okay, we are, we want to complement them with SSDs so that uh, we can balance the performance aspect, uh, high cost, small capacity, high performance with the large capacity uh, and low cost and see, and see if we can get something better than the CMR. So let's try to uh, give you some introduction here. So the first thing I want to do is that I want to sort of state the problem. And I use a couple of marketing slides here, you know, uh, redeployed for, uh, for this type of purpose. What this slide is saying most of all is that the data is getting big. That's no surprise, everybody knows it. Data keep growing, uh, 44 zettabytes in 2020, I think is what ADC predicted. Uh, last week uh, at IDC direction, they went further to predict that in 2025 would be, I believe, 180 zettabytes. Doesn't matter, it's a lot of data. But what uh, I want to point out of here is that uh, the, com the data grow, but the complexity for managing the data grow faster than that. And this is because uh, you have data, but you also have uh, the data to describe the data, the metadata. The metadata are layered everywhere application of metadata, file system metadata, database and metadata, uh, array controller, you know, you get metadata everywhere. And the more they grow, the harder they are to manage because our size grows too. And also with the data growing, the distribution happen on multiple type of servers. So all these servers need to be kept in, kept in sync. So one thing I think we have to make sure here that we understand is that not only the data grow, but it's becoming more and more important to understand the nature of the data. Some of them are, are, are latency uh, sensitive. Some of them are bandwidth sensitive. Some of them need protection. Some can be volatile. Uh, some may be kept closer to the CPU. Some are actually for uh, long-term retention and uh, reference. So they don't need higher, higher performance. So knowing how to place your data is the key to make it successful when the data set grow. And this is about the data, but if you look to the storage element, it's about the same story. This slide over here is, uh, is part of the Seagate public roadmap. Uh, and it's pretty much showing the whole set of products that we have uh, from the SMR archival type of drive here, where you have uh, you know, that, uh, a, 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 a very high gigabyte per dollar, which means very low dollar per gigabyte type of cost. So large capacity, you know, cost optimized, but uh, extremely low performance. And on the other side, we go to SSDs and adding cards where you have the opposite, right? Capacity is small, performance is extremely large. Today, what people tend to do is that they tend to shoot in the middle. We make a configuration, we standard drive, we put it in the middle, and it works, but it works to a point because with all these growing complexities, um, one size does, uh, will not fit all. 
And the problem is that uh, it's not that moving to SMR is a better solution. It would be too slow. And it's not that moving to all SSDs, uh, in general at least, is a good solution because, just because uh, you know, the cost uh, of that solution will simply break your back. So what we want to do here is basically, we start with uh, a baseline using normal hard drive, and then we say, let's throw in one on the extremely right, capacity, high capacity, but low performance, and one on the stream, stream left. And let's see if we can do something on the data location to help uh, with that. So let me build this slide here. So I know, I'm sure you're familiar with Seth. Uh, Seth is a, is a file system, uh, object repository, can serve file, can serve object, uh, can, uh, can serve a block. Uh, and the way it's done is that it is designed for large scale. These all represent servers. You can have a configuration where you have a few servers, 10 servers, you can, can have a 10,000 servers. It's, it's built for high scalability. It has a protection mechanism, replicate data. I mean, we won't care there. We want to care about the performance aspect. And the way it, it, uh, it works is that uh, when you see a disk, put the file system on that. Uh, and by the way, this is very important. I will get back to that later. You know, VetraFS, XFS, CXC4, pick your file system. And on top of it, you put their own container called OSD. This is the object store where they put all the data. And Seth starts writing into this object storage. And today, as I said, most people start, okay, this is a hard drive, pick, you know, whatever hard drive of your choice uh, and use it. So, when uh, what we are doing is that uh, when you deploy Ceph, uh, Ceph has his own uh, layer, your clients, your layers, and you have uh, this persistent storage, which is a drive. And what we are doing is that say, okay, let's do something that is exactly the same, but beside hard drive, let's also put uh, some SSDs. And uh, we see how to place data. Uh, in, uh, in the final configuration, we are shooting is that uh, we are placing our own caching layers and uh, because we want to see how to allocate the data. And when you look to caching layer, and this is what to be really draw your attention, is that uh, the policies of caches is what is most important. And given we have to start from somewhere, we simply said, uh, well, SMR are good for big blocks, SSD for small blocks, so whatever is big goes here, whatever is small goes there. It's very simple. And I'm not saying that this is the end of the game. This is just to show how a very simple Trivial implementation, well, trivial concept implementation is much more complex, much more complex than that. But a, a very basic concept that can deliver performance. Now, looking forward in the future, you might start thinking about, uh, well, what if we get different policies? What if I, we can know something more, not only on the statistical distribution of data, but also their own nature? What if we can get plugins into set from the file system and tell us that the data that are coming down remember my first slide, have a specific type of nature and therefore need a specific type of treatment. And in that case, it's better to solve the application. But for now, let's start from the beginning. And what we need is just, uh, okay, just the benchmark. This is, the first thing is uh, just a sanity check. We want to make sure that what we are saying makes sense. So we build a single server. So this is a single node. There is no replication, there is no other services, just because we want to focus on that aspect of performance. And what we do, we have a conventional magnetic recording, single magnetic recording, just a drive, just replace, replacing it. Uh, eight terabyte in that case uh, were used. And as expected, performance in SMR, using SMR, are lower, which is megabyte per second, are lower. How much lower? I don't know, it's probably like uh, 330 compared to 250. So 20, 25%. First interesting message here is that uh, SMR drive are much slower than, than CMR. But uh, the different surface is not that big because there are other bottlenecks in the system. You know, the system is much more, is, uh, so many layers of software that get uh, to, that contribute to the performance. So storage uh, is only part of it. And then we said, okay, why don't we put our Nitro card, the SSD that I mentioned before, AAC card, and our own caching layer. And let's just make a, a, a couple of tests for sanity. And uh, what we did is that this is write only because we are looking to data location. Doesn't mean that the are not important. It's that because of what we are doing, 
on, 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 on writing data is, uh, is what is more relevant. And let's pick something which is large block or megabyte. Let's pick something which is 4K. And the first thing that come out uh, for a scientific standpoint is that, uh, yes, SMR is in both cases faster than CMR in different type of degrees. Uh, that was, uh, you know, as expected because, uh, you know, the SSDs can contribute to that. But we wanted to go a layer, a layer deeper than that and try to understand it more, more what's happening. So what we did here is uh, the same four megabyte write test. These two charts, by the way, one has to do with uh, uh, performance and one has to do with latency. So you may assume that one is inversely proportional to the other as it seems, but uh, let's ignore the latency for now, just look at the performance. And when you see here is, uh, well, let me walk you through this. First, uh, man, behind the speaker is not a good sign. Um, SMR only, and this is uh, our baseline with SMR is uh, 135. So next thing that we do is that, uh, like is common policy with SAP, uh, let's move the journal only to SSDs because the journal are the most critical data, the one that is much faster service and which is obviously so. So let's move to SSDs. And uh, yes, that is improvement. I mean, uh, this is on this scale may not seem much, but 135 to 194, I think 60 out of 135 is what 40%. I mean, 40% at a benchmark level means it's, it's a big difference. But then we start playing with uh, the concept of nature of data. And we said, well, why would we do that? SAP is a capability where instead of telling him, this is just storage for data, this is just storage for journal, we can tell him that, uh, you know, you can build it here. You can build it here himself. I mean, who better than SAP know where you want to write the data? If it is uh, what type of uh, priorities and uh, quality of service that SLA requires. So we let SAP do it, and yes, you see all this thing over here went up, you know, at five nine. And then we said, well, let's try with, uh, with the opposite. Instead of knowing the nature of the data on top, let's look at the, the data flow at the bottom and use our caching metric. And the interesting thing is that uh, he's sort of trying to beat Seth at his own game. He knows the data. He should be the one that knows where they are placed. So he should want it to be the maximum possible performance. What we get is that even with that basic, very basic way we do it caching, we get higher performance. So 777 here over 590. So you look at this and start saying, this is fishy. How can uh, we beat Seth at his own game uh, just using this uh, very basic caching? And this is four meg. So the first idea is that let's try to check it out what happened with 4K, the opposite corner, right? Four meg is very big, 4K is very small. And you look to 4K and you look at it and say, whoa, that's even more. Because the difference, uh, uh, in previous slide was a 6x from the baseline, this one is 11x. The, the difference is even bigger. And even if that is probably reasonable because the 4K uh, is, um, you know, is, a, is a so small granularity that is not exactly what Seth can do best, best and it is more at storage level. We said, okay, let's, let's go and open the hood. Let's look to the other side. Here we are, we are looking at Seth to put the data where he thinks they belong. Now let's look from the bottom and let's see our cache layer, what type of data stream C is so that we can place them based uh, on the stream. And we start having something interesting here because uh, this chart, I mean, if you're in architecture stuff, this is probably the one you find most interesting. Is that uh, what we are doing here is that uh, we are instrumenting our cache and we say, yeah, big goes this way, small goes that way. By the way, we pick 32K as uh, the line to divide uh, what is big and what is small. And let's look at uh, what is the distribution of years that we get. So this is uh, a, a TX before with uh, the different size of objects. So the four meg and the four K we used before are here. There are a couple more in one meg and eight meg just to, to get more granularity. And the way this is uh, designed is that um, on the Y axis is the amount of uh, IOs that we get. On the X axis is uh, the size, so up to 4K, 8K, 16, 32, 128, 256, uh, and, and so on. And the first thing that you start thinking is that, uh, most of all for the large sizes, uh, 4 meg, you assume everything that is 4 meg aligned, or chop down to 256 and move to 256. When you look to what happened, we get a lot more traffic over here. 
I mean, they, they seem small, but you know, each one of them uh, is impacting because it's random the, the single magnetic recording in a very, very bad way. The performance there are really dripping, are really dropping. So the number may be small, but the impact is huge. And if you look at that, uh, every type of size has a lot of them. 4K, of course, is, you know, is all over the map because it's small by itself. Even though there are lots of, uh, of, the, of, of these uh, large effects. And this is interesting because uh, one of the reasons, uh, you know, Seth is doing the right way when you allocate the data. But remember, as I said, there is a file system underneath. And this file system chops the data, creates its own metadata again, going back to the nature of data, and allocate them uh, in the way that it, it, it is uh, more appropriate. So even if we think that uh, from top we only write very big objects, we get to the bottom is a very different picture. So this starts giving a, an idea on uh, why these performances are so uh, different uh, in, the, in the 4 meg uh, compared to the 4K. 4K is much more gains because of the fragmentation is much higher. The 4 meg is not as big, but there is still a lot of them. And if you look, uh, you know, 1 meg and 8 meg. So the other thing is that uh, why I think the XT4, why? Because the XT4 is the one that's showing this problem uh, the most. Uh, it is very dependent on the file system that is underneath. Uh, so if we try to do the same with uh, the XFS, uh, well, you see that you still have uh, some of the same distribution, but it's not as uh, it's evident as the other one. So from this standpoint, XFS uh, is a much better behavior. The, um, the point what we bring, what we want to make over here is again, uh, even though when you look from application, things are all nice and clean and then multiple of four megabytes and well aligned uh, and you meet everything and the application is doing everything that it wants to, uh, to, to, to store in the appropriate medium, as they go through the stack, this thing gets shattered and fragmented in, in multiple ways. So having somebody, which is actually at the bottom, that helps allocate the data, is giving this uh, big performance improvement. So if we look longer, longer term, you may also think about that there can be a combination where the lower layer handles the block uh, allocation, but the upper layer, the one that knows the natural data, can provide uh, uh, you know, information or hints. You know, I, Paraga had a presentation earlier here. I don't know who was here. Uh, you know, he, he spoke about some of these opportunities and hinting is one of the opportunities. So being able to use this information on natural data together with the information that has to do with the, the way the data flow is, uh, is essential to provide uh, uh, better performance uh, in general. But uh, the slides on the presentation here today is not only, it's not only about uh, the performance itself, but it's also the cost performance. So here are some metrics uh, that are on this specific setup. Remember, when you get into cost, uh, now it depends on what you set up, the type of storage you use, how many SSDs, uh, uh, so many variables, right? So in this one over here, we are making some comparison here in different metrics uh, where we are comparing, again, the cost of storage only using the device that we use. So this does not include, uh, you know, something which is in common, which is uh, the server, but also you know, the electrical part, cooling, you know, different type of devices uh, and, and, and the fact that, uh, SMR are bigger, so if you want, you can do the same thing with fewer devices. There are a lot of things you want to consider. But there are a few metrics over here, which are the price per gigabyte, which is, uh, you know, these are uh, the TMR per terabyte compared to the SMR uh, at eight terabytes. And also based on the performance, this is megabyte per second for 4K, the price per megabyte per second and the price for four megabyte uh, uh, performance. So, Performance-wise, these are somewhere sort of a wash. On the 4K, because of the much more performance of uh, SMR is more evident, but in absolute terms, uh, the cost per gigabyte, uh, even if SSDs are put in an equation, is, uh, is definitely lower. And the performance that we've seen are, are much higher. And, th and this thing, you know, we said that we do it once a uh, You know, we can scale, uh, you know, set can scale to every large application and very large uh, configuration. So the typical thing, and this is uh, here for OPC, you know, just using the same architecture, put it together, fill up the rack and, you know, 
that, that's what came out in the October. 33.5 terabytes of flash, 2.2 petabytes in a rack. You want to make multiple rack, do as many rack as you want. You know, so scalability is known to be pretty, you know, pretty extensive to go well beyond the rack. Um, I don't know if you're interested, we have a couple of slides over here showing how it works. Uh, if you're interested, uh, just very quickly. Okay. This is uh, the original. Uh, okay. Uh, so I'll be brief. this is the original one, and what you want to see, this is a CMR. You want to see, you know, mainly to, to this number over here. This is uh, the four megabyte write. And what you see is that this, it is running, everything is green, so he can do it, he's, he's up to the task. But if you look to this number, you see that he's under some type of stress in terms of uh, consistency. It does perform, it works, but you see performances of 34, 199 to 41, it, uh, it's not consistent because uh, of, the, of the situation of the storage, not being able to keep up at best. If we do the same one uh, with, uh, Same one with uh, with uh, the, 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 the caching. We run pad, but what we see is that this is not only much higher, 400 and something compared to gain uh, anything between uh, you know 50 to 300, uh, but it's also more stable. I mean, these numbers are pretty much always in the in the, in the 400. So you one of the benefits that you get is not only higher performance, but most of all more consistent performance. So that uh, and you know when when you deploy application. Consistency, so outlier, quality of service, or whatever it is, is one. Uh, sometimes it is an even more important mechanism. And uh, I, you know, we have like for the 4K, you want to skip it because it's a. Uh, so, what we want to close over here is just that, uh, you know, the message here is that, uh, you know, the big data is creating big challenges, but also big opportunities. Do not only look to the size of the data, which is which is extremely important, but also to the fact that the nature of the data may require or may benefit of a different type of policies. Some of them can be provided by the application. Some of them can be provided by uh, the lower <coughs> layer of the stack. Today, these two work pretty much independently, but there is a potential opportunity, and I'm sure that in uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the forthcoming you know years. People start working more on that to try to create a, a close-up tie between the physical view and the logical view because the performance and most of all the cost that are associated with that uh, is, uh, you know, is becoming really visible. So, if if there's any question, we have two minutes for for question. No question. They are saying I'm perfect. Yeah, <laughs> that's what you say. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. So our next presentation.